We've talked before about Trinity Western University. It's a small university in BC that has a Christian mission. It teaches secular subjects, and now it plans to open a law school, but it's the kind of place you go if you prefer to live a more modest lifestyle than the bacchanalia that many universities have become, a four-year adult day camp of booze, sex, drug, and other excesses. Trinity Western offers an alternative for students who don't want to live a culture of libertinism. It's not for everybody. It's self-selected, of course, just like going to a Catholic high school instead of a public high school is. Students take a personal conduct pledge not to have premarital sex, not to abuse drugs, and to generally live modestly. This university has been quietly chugging away for decades, and as you'd expect, their, their graduates are outstanding citizens. About 10 years ago, some anti-Christian bigots at the extremist BC Teachers Federation tried to blacklist students from Trinity Western, saying that because they took that personal conduct pledge, it made them unsuitable to teach. Seriously, talk about opposite day. Because they were of Christian morality, they would be banned from having the legal right to teach. But the teachers' union claimed that Christians would certainly be anti-gay, which is absurd and insulting and just not true. Well, naturally, the Supreme Court of Canada slapped those teachers' union bigots down, eight to one in a ruling. I mean, if you're uncertain about the concept, go read the Chart of Rights and Freedoms. Section two, the fundamental freedoms part, it lists freedom of conscience and religion as the very first freedom in Canada. And the next one is freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. And just in case you're wondering, the preamble of the charter, that's before they even get into the various section, reads, whereas Canada is founded upon principles that recognize the supremacy of God and the rule of law. The supremacy of God, that's in our Constitution. Again, how could the BC Teachers Federation have possibly thought that it would be okay for them to ban teachers from a Christian school just because they take a pledge of personal morality? Well, as we told you recently, the anti-Christian bigots are at it again. A few months ago, BC's Law Society, that is the organization that rules over lawyers in the province, that decides who can and can't be a lawyer, that punishes lawyers who do things wrong, they made the right decision. They let Trinity Western get a license to be a law school and their grads can practice in the province. They know it's illegal to discriminate based on religion, and if they didn't know it, the Supreme Court case reminded them of that. But a group of bigoted anti-Christian activists objected to the Law Society's decision. And they circulated a demand that there be a province-wide vote of lawyers on the subject. And they got the requisite number of lawyers to sign that uh, petition for a plebiscite. And in the vote last night, only a minority of lawyers in the province bothered to show up. But the anti-Christian bigots won. Now, this vote isn't binding on the Law Society, but let me acknowledge something I wish weren't true. It shows that anti-Christian bigotry in the Law Society isn't just a handful of activists. It's thousands of lawyers. I thought it would be just a few percent, like those fringe racist kooks who still dress up in Ku Klux Klan outfits once in a while and pretend it's 1875 in the Deep South or something. It would be more than a bit shocking to learn that there were thousands of KKK members in BC who hate blacks, let's say. Well, there are thousands of lawyers in BC today who want to ban Christian-believing students from the profession simply because they hold a personal religious belief. I say again, these Trinity Western students haven't done anything wrong. They haven't even done anything at all, actually. They don't exist yet. The school won't open for another year or so. Just the thought of Christian thinking lawyers is enough to have them banned, apparently. What's going on here? Well, let me read from a speech given last night by the ringleader of the anti-Christian bigots, a Vancouver, a Victoria lawyer named Michael Mulligan. He started off by citing the Holocaust implying that Trinity Western is continuing in the tradition of the Nazis. Can you believe that? And then right after mentioning the Holocaust, here's what he said about Christians and Trinity Western. I'm going to read a whole paragraph from Mulligan's speech. Here's what he said. And here is another critical truth. Much of this horrible history is being derived from or justified by religious references. In the present context, there is no moral or legal equivalency between the religious freedom and the right to be free from discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. One is about freedom of belief and dogma, even if rooted in ignorance and sometimes resulting in bigotry. The other is a right to be free from harm. You can read his whole speech on his website for yourself. Just Google Michael Mulligan of Victoria if you want. So first of all, he's linking the Holocaust to Christians. Even though Hitler was a pagan who raged against the church, even plotted to assassinate the Pope, and even though the church saved thousands of Jews from Hitler, and just in case you're wondering what Mulligan's own views on Christianity are, he said it's a dogma rooted in ignorance. And he says Christianity, you know, the love thy neighbor religion, results in bigotry 
Well, the biggest killers in world history, Stalin, Hitler, Mao, were either atheists or, or pagans like Hitler. And Mulligan blames freedom of religion for harm. And he's saying this in 2014. And he specifically says that in any such contest, freedom of religion must come second. But first of all, there is no harm to gays by a Christian law school, by a law student pledging to live his life as a Christian. By what possible definition is that harmful to someone else? And Mulligan seems to have forgotten that the Charter specifically says freedom of religion is the most important, the first right in the list of fundamental freedoms in Canada. And the whole Charter is based on the supremacy of God. There are gay students at Trinity Western. They just agree to live their life in a modest Christian way. They chose to do so. And gays or straights that don't want to make that choice, well, they have more than a dozen other law schools to choose from in Canada, including three alone in B.C. You know what this is really about? It's not about stopping anti-gay harm as Mulligan says, there is no harm. There are no grads yet, though Mulligan wants to convict them in advance of any harm. This is about hate. You can see it dripping from Mulligan's own description of Christianity, linking Christians to Nazis, saying Christians are bigoted, harmful. He's the mirror image of those he claims are haters. But Trinity Western and Christians aren't trying to stop gays or atheists from practicing law. It's Mulligan and his fellow Christophobes who are. Look, I'm sympathetic to gay rights, and we have them more than almost any other country in the world. We have gay marriage in Canada. We have gay adoption in Canada. We have gay people in high office in Canada. It's not even really a thing anymore. I believe in equality before the law. It's not just in the law, it's in the culture now. I don't think that anti-gay bigotry is generally acceptable in society, which is why Michael Mulligan had to refer to things in previous centuries or in other countries like Germany's Holocaust 75 years ago to make his case against Trinity Western today. Trinity Western doesn't hate gays, though you'd almost think Mulligan wants them to, to justify his own anti-anti-gay hatred. Because I think that's what this is about. It's uncomfortable to say it, I know, but hate is a natural human emotion. If you don't hate something <coughs> ever, you're not normal. I mean, you don't have a fully formed personality. Love, hate, contempt, respect... These are opposite sides of the same emotional coin. If you are capable of feeling love, you are capable of feeling hate in many forms. I mean, do you love the New York Yankees or do you hate them? I know that's not a deep visceral hate, but for some people it is actually. How about that mass murderer who just killed Mounties in cold blood in Moncton? Do you not hate him? Where's your heart if you don't? Have you seen that movie Schindler's List about the Holocaust? How can you watch that movie without feeling hate towards the Nazis? That's what Mulligan is counting on, to tap into your anti-Nazi hate. And then he diverts it to Christians in Canada in 2014. Do you not hate the Boko Haram Islamic terrorists who kidnapped close to 300 Nigerian schoolgirls as sex slaves? Do you not hate them? If you don't, then you are not fully human, I put it. That is why it is absurd to have anti-hate laws. I mean, you can no more outlaw hate then you can outlaw love because both are natural human emotions. What we want to do with our hate is to control it, not to express it violently, not to truly harm someone. And if we can raise ourselves up to be our best, to take those negative emotions and transform them into positive things, to make something good out of something bad. I hate the fascists who banned I and Hersey Alley, the Muslim woman activist, from Brandeis University this spring. So, you know, I tried to do something positive, and you helped me. We raised 10000 bucks to buy the Canadian rights to her film. We're going to put that on Sun News Network. That's taking hate and doing something lovely with it. You know what I think? I think that Michael Mulligan and a lot of the anti-Christian lawyers who voted against Trinity Western, I think they're full of hate themselves. They hate Christians. They want to ban Christians. They want to demonize Christians. I don't know why. Maybe they have bad memories of being dragged to church as kids. I don't know. Maybe they're fighting some personal demons. Maybe they have a spiritual void in their lives. Maybe they hate Christianity because it has rules of moral conduct that they despise because they hate any rules that limit our human appetites and they feel judged because they love the lascivious lifestyle and want everyone to wallow in it with them. And the fact that some Christians choose a life of modesty shames them by comparison. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist or a theologian, but I detect this hatred a lot in them. The homosexual rights movement shouldn't be about hate. It should be gay. It should be about being happy, about love. I acknowledge that for centuries, in many places, homosexuals were treated with hate and were hated. But not that we have a quality, but now that we have equality before the law and broad cultural equality, it is not right for perpetual gay activists to think that the next frontier, the next hurdle for them, is to ava avenge deeds from centuries past by punishing and hating Christians today. 
by treating a Christian minority today the way the gay minority was treated historically. It's giving in to hate in the name of love. It's vengeance, not justice. It's illegal, by the way, no matter how some legal tricksters might try to spin it. And more than that, it threatens the new and tentative social consensus. Gay activism has wrought a new social status in the few years, upending thousands of years of morality. This is still being considered by many thoughtful people, still finding an equilibrium. If you doubt me, go to any Muslim-majority school in Canada and ask to meet the Gay-Straight Alliance. Yeah, good luck with that. By radical gay activists like Mulligan going beyond equality and by going beyond love into hate, by going beyond tolerance into blacklisting of their own enemies, they not only violate their own supposed morality of tolerance and equality, but they threaten to push too far and to lose the consent of the majority of Canadians. If gay rights is about equality, Canadians will embrace it. If it's about exterminating Christians from the public square, about hounding Christians out of polite company, Canadians will reject that. Michael Mulligan isn't promoting gay rights. He's attacking Christians. It could backfire, and he will end up doing more harm to public tolerance for gay politics than he can fathom.